Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to attempt to process the Cocoon Nebula with Dwarf 2 data. Uh, we're going to try to do two different methods, one being run through Fit Scrubber and then processed in serial and one just running it in serial. So let's get started with the video. All right, so with this video, we're really gonna see, you know, part of the limitation of Dwarf 2. Uh, the data that was provided uh, was actually shot using the ZWO do band filter as well for extra contrast with the nebulosity. Uh, light pollution was kind of bad at the uh, time of this video. It was about six, Boral class six. So you have to keep all the factors in mind when it comes to the actual processing, seeing how well it comes out. Uh, but let's get started with it. Obviously we're gonna open serial first Let's hit our home directory and set it for the Dwarf 2 data. It's going to be in our desktop, Dwarf Raw data, hit open. And then we're going to run it through our uh, OSC pre-processing without dark bias or flat, and we're just going to allow that to finish. Okay, so stacking is complete. That took about, uh, let's see. It did not say how long that took. I, oh yeah, there we go. Two minutes and 47 seconds to complete. Uh, before we do the first serial processing, I'm going to take the FITS file and run it through uh, FITS scrubber real quick. Here, let's go open this up. Here it is. I'm just going to drag this on here. The result that FIT file. Pull it up here. There we go. Oop, nope. Okay, open. Go for all. Result that FIT, open. I'm going to X that out. Uh, start removal and re remove green tint because we haven't done any processing on it yet. We're going to allow that to process. And um, also, what star removal is, it does allow you to save the star mask file and the starless file for post processing as well. So that is handy. Uh, you don't really have to worry about this. So let me allow this to finish and hit start. And then we can start working on the processing. So start that. Uh, while we allow this to run, we're going to get started on the serial processing without the. Um, without the fit scrubber. So open, result.fit, open. We're gonna put this in auto stretch and unlink our image. Here is the cocoon nebula. I guess there's a little bit of dark nebulosity here. We have a lot of rotational uh, noise in this image, unfortunately. Hopefully we can kind of edit that out. Uh, but first things first, we're gonna switch it to, no, sorry, we're gonna go to image processing. And this is really just a test to see what the Dwarf 2 can do. So first things first, as always, background extraction, we're going to generate it. Mm, no, we need to kind of lower the grid tolerance, bring up the samples, and hit generate. There we go, we hit apply on that. Now let's kind of get rid of a lot of this rotational noise. We're going to do our geometric uh, crop. There we go. Turn it this way until we get most of the noise out of there. That should be good. Apply, close. Uh, next thing we're going to do, we're going to remove the green noise from this image. Apply. Hit close. Let's save that. Uh, next thing we have to do is our color calibration. Photometric color calibration. Now let me look up the actual name. Uh, maybe it's here. I'm pretty sure you have to type in the actual... Yeah, no. Let me check this. This cover already finished. Let's see. Cocoon Nebula. It is IC5146, so let's type that in. Find. There we go. And we leave everything the same. Get metadata from image. Click this. Okay. Okay, color calibration succeeded. So uh, let's get started on the actual processing now. We're going to hit save on here. Image processing, we're gonna do our star net star removal. Pre-stretch linear image and up sample, execute and allow that to run and we will come back to once that is complete. All right, star net is finished. I see that it got a lot of the dark nebula so we don't have that anymore, but here's a nebula right there. Uh, let's see if we can do something with this, switch it to linear. Uh, I'm gonna to try to do a noise reduction first. Obviously we're gonna do this one Kind of lower it down just a little bit and hit apply. Flex the pixels. Oof, no. Wow, that's a lot of noise, huh? I got rid of all of it. All right, go back. Switch it to auto stretch again. 
and try the noise one more time. Apply, maybe it was just because we had it in linear mode. Yeah, no, it just, it doesn't want to work very well like that. So uh, let's switch it back to linear and do our uh, generalized hyperbolic stretch. Bump this up to 100. Find the symmetry point. Seems to be a little bit odd. Obviously, there's not a lot of nebulosity, which is probably why it's like this. Bring this up as much as possible. It's too much. Let's apply that. Bring up the black noise. Tiny mean, black point. Apply. Bring it up a little bit more. By selecting this nebula here. So that's symmetry point, bring it up. Apply black point again. Bring that up. That's too much noise in this. Honestly, the fact that we're able to see this nebula uh, with the dwarf 2 is quite shocking because we know this is a very dim nebula. Even the C star S50 had a hard time bringing this one out, uh, which I will show eventually in the future. But I mean, there it is. That's as good as we can get it, honestly, without having too much noise in the image or we can try it with the fit scrubber we'll see what happens so uh, image processing color saturation bring it up obviously we don't want it oversaturated apply and that's that's like as good as we can do let's bring the stars back in star processing recomposition uh, here is our starless result and our star mask result open that bring all the stars back in Hit apply here. Bring. I just want to bring up the black point a little bit, just to make a little bit of a background. You can't see the dark neb nebulosity here, barely, but it's nice that you can see it some. Apply that. We apply this. Close that, and we save this as our unique file. Another thing we can do is we can run this through starfixer.org, which we will do now. Let me open that starfixer. There we go. Just to clean up the stars a little bit. Open this PNG. There it is. And we'll just allow this to run uh, while we work on the fit scrubber version. Just click here to allow that to do its thing. And then we open up fit scrubber. Here's the nebula. Again, this is 999 exposures. Uh, maybe we can work with this a little bit to try to bring the nebulosity out. It's kind of blurry, but it is what it is at the moment. Uh, download the fits file and the star mask file. It will be in our download, so let's go ahead and close that out. And hit open here to our downloads. Give it another minute. Here it is done downloading, so let's check the downloads again. There it is. Uh, here is the proper file. Hit that. All right, uh, let's do the same thing as last time. Uh, we're going to switch it to our auto stretch. That looks awful. We're going to switch it back to the linear. And we're going to try to work with this. Uh, let's do our... No, we can't do the geometry yet. We'd have to uh, have the star mask in here to do that. So we're going to do our background extraction. Generate. Compute background. Even that out. Apply. It already made the image look cleaner just by doing that. Uh, we will do our color calibration. No, we can't do that. Oops. We will do our, let's see, we did the background extraction, there's no need to do noise reduction. Uh, let's do the remove green noise, apply that, hit close, again, it cleaned it up a little bit more. Now let's do our generalized hyperbolic stretch. Uh, switch this to one. As you can see, I made a nice clean arc here. Oof, don't want that, that looks bad. Generalized hyperbolic stretch, just click here, kind of start bringing it up. But not too much. Apply. Then the black point. We're going to bring that down. Apply. Hit close. Honestly, it's a lot of rotational noise. It would have been better if it had been polar aligned, which the Dwarf 2 is, in fact, able to do. But there's still, again, the nebulosity there and everything. Uh, so it's decent. It's okay. You know, for the Cocoon Nebula with its uh, Dwarf 2, there really isn't much to do. Uh, like that you can do you'd have to have like a whole lot of exposures maybe like 3,000 exposures to get a decent looking image for this nebula uh, Because it is very faint and very small 
So image processing, color saturation, bring that up a tiny bit. Not too much because we don't want to oversaturate it. There you go. I hit apply. And we do our, uh, we bring our stars in, save this, and then bring stars in with this. Uh, start processing, recomposition. This will be in our downloads. Stars are right here somewhere. There it is. Open, and we bring the stars in. All right, let's save this now. Apply. Close. And this actually looks better than the other image since you can see the, the dark nebula here and then the nebula there in the center. Let's crop this. Geometry, rotational crop. It's more obvious where the noise is. It's easier to cut out. All right, apply, close that, and we save this as a unique file. Let's close that of serial. Open this up. Where's our star fixer? Let's refresh this. There we go, it's done. Let's look at our image. There's three different ones that we can check. First one is not good. Second one, still not good. Third one. Uh, it cleaned up the noise a little bit, I will say. That is nice. This one's not the best, so let's just save this one. Alright, so let's compare these two images here. Which one's better in regards to... Um, the Fitzgover or only Cyril, I do believe that we are going to agree that Fitzgover did make it look better. Uh, let's see, our pictures, Cyril, no, it is going to be our desktop, or two raw data, it's going to be these two here. Downloads, there we go. Let me check these. So here's the one with Fitzgover, and here is the one only zero. Which one would you say is better? You can just leave that in the comments below. Obviously, neither of these are pretty much ideal. Again, this was really pushing the limit of Dwarf 2 because, as I said, this is a very dim nebula. Very, very dim nebula. Maybe if you ran it through PixInsight, obviously you'd be able to get better images because it uses um, the AI to, to fix it up. But we were not using AI. We were just working with the pure data here. Uh, so, obviously, uh, Cocoon Nebula is not the best nebula to work with Dwarf 2. I mean, there's a whole lot of other ones, but this is what the best movie you could get with the Dwarf 2 using the Cocoon Nebula. So, uh, maybe work the process, if you wanted to use this for other nebula, the ones that were shown in the video, the process, uh, if you could use that in other nebulas, it would come out much better. Uh, but for the Cocoon Nebula, maybe it's just not the best. So, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and subscribe, and stay tuned for future videos.